So, weiter geht's im dritten Video und ganz interessant ist ja, dass das Spiel ja schon in der Early Access Phase äh, äh, läuft und dass auch viele Spieler schon ihr Feedback geben. So, um, a lot of uh, gamers uh, gave you the feedback and you changed something in the game? That's right, that's right. So that's the nice thing about Early Access, right? It actually, um, you know, the whole idea is to actually put your game out on Early Access, that uh, uh, people that are real fans and want to contribute to the process actually buy the game. And then uh, on the Steam forums, they can actually reflect on it. So there's been a lot of people uh, that uh, like certain aspects of the game. Then you try to, you know, listen to that and try to uh, develop that into a better part. There's, of course, a lot of people that have, uh, you know, comments on uh, some of the things. Like, for instance, if we open... Uh, the inventory screen right now. So this is an alpha version? This is an alpha mm. version. So there's a lot of stuff in this inventory screen. The positions are pretty much uh, uh, fixed. There's a lot of information here that you need to know. But if you look at it, it kind of feels, um, it feels complex. There's mm -hmm. a lot of details in here. Uh, also concerning like the different abilities, you have different ability schools, you also have a lot of different talents that you can choose from. Uh, and the whole problem here was, okay, there, there are lists right now. Mm -hmm. So people complain about that, we don't like it, it's a lot cluttered, and we know these things as well. But the moment you see the urgency of it, you might spend more resources on uh, you know, improving that bit. And the new version of the inventory will have you know, small little icons with there, there will be in better explanations, stuff will look more uh, inviting. You mm -hmm. know, the new interface is more uh, wooden metal, so that it gives that fantasy feeling to it. And that people don't really feel scared of all these icons and numbers that they're actually encountering in the game. Maybe for you as a developer, you're sitting the whole day for your computers and developing your game. And for you, this inventory is not so huge and so exactly, complex. Exactly, exactly. So, so, but if you uh, get feedback from the, from the gamer, says, what the hell is this? It's true, it's true, because you must imagine, right? So yeah. as a gamer, I don't know if you have it yourself. When you're playing a game and suddenly you say like, hey, this doesn't make sense. Why did they do this? Mm. But you should think that the guys making this game are trying to get the game going, okay? Mm. Once the game is going and fully working, that's usually the end of the development cycle and that's when the game comes out. So preferably big companies like Blizzard and Ubisoft, whenever the game is completely done, they do their target audience testing, etc., and then they tweak the game a little more. But Early Access gives us a chance to actually uh, tweak the game uh, prior to, uh, to actually going to the final stage, which is a lot more efficient, obviously, when you're uh, making the game because you get the feedback as you're in the cycle. Because we could have chosen to make the inventory a completely different thing, a horse with different mm. things on it, uh, which would have been completely the wrong direction without having that feedback. Yeah, you need the view from the gamer out, who looks outside, outside the box. Yes. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Where are we? Uh, because uh, what, what, what are we going to do now? So, we came from the village of Silver Glen where we got uh, uh, the mission to actually uh, find uh, the troll cave and uh, find the black rock in the cave and give it to Brandon so that he could have a nice retirement plan. So we're moving out of uh, the village of Silver Glen with our party and we're moving towards uh, the northern part of uh, uh, the Lucola forest. That's what this uh, region is called. So the graphics is still also alpha, or is it what what we see the 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 um, yeah, the finished version or? Well, the graphics are pretty much finished. Mm. So yeah. uh, usually near the end of the game, uh, the improvements you make with the graphics are the post effects, mm. you know, the blurs, the motion blurs, things like that. But uh, yeah, they're here and there. They're still in the game. There are some stub objects uh, that have checker patterns and stuff like that in there. But uh, most of it, uh, most of the graphical content is pretty much in the game already. So as we move on here, we come across a little barricade with the Immaculates. And of course you can recognize the Immaculates by their dark uh, uh, outfits. They usually have those things and they're really pale. I don't know what that is, mm -hmm. we'll get that fixed, but they're really pale mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. It makes them kind of gruesome. Now this guy is telling me like, hold it, only those with Father Loik's blessing may go further. Now that was the guy we actually met in the chapel. So we can do uh, four things here. We can say no need for violence. I'll return to him and get his blessing and then no. we'll pass. Or we can say like, uh, hey, if I uh, draw my weapon, this is the, la the last thing you'll ever see. So yes. we can intimidate him. This is a good or, answer. Or, hold up. Okay. <laughs> or we can say, surely a man as wise as you can decide for himself who may or mayn't pass. And what I know is that this guy is quite sensitive to charming. Okay. okay. So we can say, you know what, uh, we'll choose this option. And then he says like, come to think of it, yes, you're absolutely right. I'm an immaculate just as uh, much as Loic, so you can pass. So he allows me to pass. Now what we just did is we had these charm, intimidate and reason dialogues, as we call them. Now in the inventory you have like these skills which are called um, 
These are abilities, they're the social skills. So you have barter, charisma, charm, intimidate, leadership, reason. If we put points in these, we actually have bonuses in situations like this. And if my perception is high enough, so if I'm actually smarter than the character I'm speaking to, the bonuses are indicated at the end of the dialogue between brackets mm -hmm. so that you know what the right uh, choice is. But we'll see that in a second if we pass through here. As you can see in the background, there's uh, actually quite some uh, you know, spider webs and stuff in the background indicating that this might be a place with... Oh yeah, there spiders? you go. Spiders? Spiders, exactly. So what we clearly see here is that the huge mighty troll has actually been uh, turned upside down and he's dead. And every bridge usually has a troll. And it's a rich troll, obviously, because he's collected all the cash of the bridge. You take it? I did, I did. Oh, okay. I took the cash. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on crossing the bridge into the north part of Lukala. Now, as you can see, there is a uh, thunderstorm uh, or a sandstorm going on, which applies a status effect on my characters. This pretty much slows them down. So the entire weather effect is having an effect on my characters. Also from the north, there is a uh, goblin trader coming my way. And uh, I talk to him and he says like, out of my way, you human scum. And I was like, who are you? What's going on? And it's clear to me that he really doesn't like humans. Who is your crazy man and your, and your company who, um animates and uh, yeah, develops these monsters? Well, there is a huge, <laughs> there's a huge process of actually going through picking the right monsters. And the good thing is at Larian, uh, you know, um, we don't, we, you know, we take what we do seriously, mm -hmm. but a game shouldn't take itself too seriously. Mm -hmm. So when you have characters in there, not everybody should be beefy, awesome and everything. You should have sometimes some strange creatures as well, like Ralphie here, which is uh, his name. Uh, but if we talk to this goblin, he says like, uh, you know, like, uh, get away from me. And we say like, hey, what do you know about spiders? Because there are spiders in this area. He says, all there is to know. But wait a second. Why should I tell you anything? He says, for a big sack of gold, I'll give away a couple of secrets. So again, we can say, I'll gladly pay you the cash. As you can see, this guy isn't smarter than I am. So my perception actually allows me to see uh, the bonuses I get from these situations. The intimidate clearly gives me the highest bonus. So if I choose that one, I'm practically guaranteed to actually intimidate him into uh, the right option. But of course, our social stat intimidate needs to be high enough as well for it to succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, we'll tell him, you know what, you'll tell me all I need to know or I'll toss you in the nearest nest of spider hatchlings. And he says like, uh, ah, I see, you savages. And he basically tells me that there's a spider queen down the road. And this spider queen is uh, just like any other uh, monarch, is quite, uh, you know, open to flattery. So if we do encounter her and we can speak to her, we should actually try to charm her in order to evade the fight. Because that's also something that uh, we like to do in our games. We like to provide you with options. So you don't need to get into fights if you don't want to. Now here we have Ralphie. I'm gonna talk to Ralphie and he says, Rah! the creature seems excited and nods at you expectantly. The problem is right now, I, I understand what his state is, but I can't talk to him. So what we'll do is we'll open our, uh, inventory and we'll go to our talents section and in the talents section you actually have a uh, talent that is called pet pal it allows you to speak to ah, creatures okay. mm -hmm. so i'm going to take that mm -hmm. i'm going to move up to him i'm going to talk to him again and ralphie says oh my oh my you can speak oh dear oh gracious oh ralphie ralphie this is the luckiest day of days so he's actually quite excited that we're here Basically what he tells me is that his master has been really treating him bad, uh, has been uh, muling him all around, he's been packing all kinds of stuff on him, and he actually beats him as well. So if you, you know... Let me think. In the 10 minutes we are sitting on his back. No? No. Okay. Unfortunately uh, okay. not. That would have been <laughs> <Okay>. cool though. <laughs> no, but what Ralphie is asking us, he's saying like, you know, I want you guys to kill this brute. No, Which why? A, it's a pretty heavy thing. We can say, well, but we bear uh, this goblin no grudge. I can't do him any harm. Or we can say, the savage. We'd be honored to free you from this goblin's tyranny. So I'm going to say that. And mm -hmm. you can actually say, to kill him without provocation would be murder, the most savage. Because you don't agree with killing a goblin. Do you? Oh, okay. So here we are. We have a discussion. I can tell you. I'd be happy to sell you off to a cruel slaver if you're so keen on the concept. Mm -hmm. Or I can say, in the name of freedom and justice, we ought to help this poor creature. Yes. Or I can say, the creature seems to be uh, uh, privy to some valuable information. It seems a worthwhile deal to make, uh, you know, to make this choice. Because he also told us that he knows a little secret about this place that will go later on. 
So this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to say, hey, this creature seems to know some information. And then you can reply to it and you can say, uh, you know, if you'd like to uh, get me in the habit of senseless violence, it'll be you who bears the consequences. That you can, that's what you can tell me. Or you can say this goblin could very much use the benefit of that level uh, head of yours. Or you can say there may be two sides of the story and I would be rash to act on only this mount's testimony. So what do you want to say in this discussion? Mm -hmm. The second. second. The second one? Yes. Okay, so you try to charm me? Yeah. And it fails, and I'm saying, no, we'll do as I say, because my charm stat is higher than yours in this okay. case. Okay. Hmm. So what are we going to do is, we're going to kill his, uh, his owner. Yeah, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> so I'm going to move here. I'm going to uh, use my beautiful barrage skill to actually shoot him in his back. That's perfect. The combat starts. And I'm going to actually shoot one of my explosive arrows on him. Which hits him full on and he doesn't really have that much health anymore. So I'm just going to fire another shot at him. And he dies. And because he's a traitor, he drops all of his loot around him. And Ralphie opens his dialogue and says, Oh, fantastic. I'm a free creature, finally. And he actually gives away the secret that he's talking about. So he tells me that... Uh, down the road, there is a little goblin village, and in this village, there is a uh, you know something fishy going on. There's a totem in this village, and he says like, uh, I've seen this shaman do some strange stuff in the back of the village, so you might want to check out what's going on there. So we have a little clue there. So now, now we, we are going to go to the village. We are going to go to okay. the village. Im nächsten Video werden wir also dann äh, den Ort wechseln, also reinklicken.